You know, there are some days when I can't wait to get started. This is one of those days. I got so many things I want to tell you today. Today, it's Pastor Bob, the love doctor, coming up next on Pastor Bob's Coffee Break. Well, it's our countdown to Christmas, rocking around the Christmas tree. There we go. It's a rocking cup. Here's the question that set it all off for today. And again, I've got so many things to share with you today. Buckle up. It's about to be good. Really. Dear Pastor Bob, I'm not in love with my wife anymore. I know the Bible says divorce is not an option, but I'm miserable I can't even stand to be around her. What should I do? Now, before you click off this podcast and think it's not for you, it is. Whether you're married or not, whether you're divorced or not, whether you're thinking about getting married, it's for you. Whether you're dealing with difficult relationships with friendships or family or whatever it might be, we're going to talk about love today. Now, it puts it into perspective when we can read the love chapter with ourselves in mind. Let me show you what I mean. The love chapter, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, and starting with verse 4, I'm going to read it with my name in there instead. Bob is patient. Bob is kind. Bob is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. Bob does not demand his own way. Bob is not irritable. Bob keeps no records of being wrong. Bob does not rejoice about injustice, but Bob rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Bob never gives up. Bob never loses faith. Bob always is hopeful. Bob endures through every circumstance. Bob, love, well, will last forever. How'd you do? <laughs> if you put your name in there, how do you do? I don't do very well. It puts it into perspective because I kind of see how far I've got to go. But also, there's some things I don't quite get about this scripture. I want to explain some of them to you. You know, first of all, we're talking about agape. It's a special kind of love. And uh, it's God's love, unconditional love. And Here's some things about agape that are really important to understand from the very beginning. Agape love is not just emotion. Now get that. Because a lot of times we feel like if the emotion is gone, the love is gone. That's not true. The world says when the feeling stops, the love is over. But you see, love is not that tingly sensation. And it can be, but it's not just that. Love is not just sentimentalism. You know, let's think about all the good times. Oh, listen, they're playing our song. You know, that kind of stuff. Love, love has nothing to do with how you feel necessarily. So God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Now, God didn't look at the world and say, wow, I just can't resist them. I've I've got to get them to heaven. They're terrific. They're fantastic. They're so wonderful. No. There wasn't one thing about us that was deserving. We were God's enemies. We were sinful, and God loved us anyway. That's kind of where we have to start. That's agape love. Now, with that in mind, love is more than just empty words. Love is action. And that's what this whole love chapter is really talking about. Love is an act of your will that chooses the best for the other person. An act of your will. It's not just simply being fond of somebody. If you get married because you're just fond of them, yikes. You see, agape love goes far beyond admiration. It sacrifices for those that are not Admirable. Yeah. Well, you know John 3.16. Here's 1 John 3.16. The other day I said the 3.16s in the Bible are always great verses. 
1 John 3, 16, we know what real love is because Jesus gave up his life for us. So we ought also to give up our lives for our brothers and sisters. Wow, that's real love. Jesus' death on the cross, even though we were not deserving. Mm. So let's go through this chapter, 1 Corinthians 13. And starting with verse 4, it says, Love is patient. Patient, what does that mean? Well, the opposite of patience is a short fuse, as we say. You know, you're always ready to, you know, lose your patience. Love is patient, patient. And then it says it's kind. You know, the word for kind is actually the Greek word for useful. It looks for ways of making life easier for the other person by giving to them. It's kind. It's useful. There's a process it goes through and well I said like I said making life easier for the other and then love is not jealous now here's another 316 verse James 316 for wherever there is jealousy and selfish ambition there you'll find disorder <clears throat> and evil of every kind <clears throat> Wherever there's jealousy and selfish ambition, they go together. There you'll find disorder. Very easy. So love is not jealous. It's not jealous. Or boastful, it says. What's boastful? Having that superior attitude and you know who you are. <laughs> you know, man, I don't think there's anything that that frustrates me more than people who feel superior. And Christians are good at this. You know, you, you're going through something and they say, well, you know, if I were you, yeah. And when you bring that into marriage, that superior attitude where you're better than the other person, yikes. Or proud. So, by the way, God isn't very impressed with how much you know. And a lot of times we wear that with pride. Well, I know the scripture very well. I know all kinds of things that, you know, that matter. And I bring all that wealth of knowledge into the relationship, really. It isn't the knowledge <laughs> that pleases God. It's the knowledge applied through love. You see, if you don't have love with the knowledge, well, the Bible said it just puffs up. <laughs> but it's knowledge that pleases God when it's applied through love. Or rude, it says. And rudeness is characterized by irritability. Uh, rude people are always ready to overreact, always. And I know those people, and I hope you're not one of them, but, you know, no matter what I'm about to say to them, they're going to overreact. It's just the way they are. Not a characteristic that's very becoming of anybody, and especially not in a marriage relationship. And then it says, love does not demand its own way. In other words, you're the first to give in. You know, sometimes when we get into discussions with friends and family and spouses, we want to be right. We want to be the one who wins the argument. There are four ways to have a discussion, an argument, a situation. Lose-lose, lose-win, win-lose, and win-win. Let me tell you what I mean. Lose-lose where we both lose. Win-lose where I win and you lose. Or lose-win where you win and I lose. Or win-win where we both win and only one of those is correct. Guess which one it is. Win-win. So you see, when... I give in, so to speak, and I don't have to win 
but I want you to win with me. We both win. Then the argument, the discussion takes on a whole different kind of path. And the Bible's agape love says win-win. We both need to win. Now let's figure out how we can do that. Be the first to give in. And then it says, love is not irritable. Now, there's a, a difference between sensitivity and touchiness. And it's important to be sensitive to the needs of others, obviously. But touchiness is kind of a self-centered thing. Irritable, irritability. You know, you're just ready to set somebody off. And you're almost afraid to talk to them because they kind of have this air of Ill irritability all the time horrible person to be married to. Love is not irritable. And then it says, love keeps no record of being wronged. You know, sometimes it's hard to forgive. And this is what it's all about, forgiveness. You know how you know if you've honestly forgiven the other person in marriage? You don't bring it up again. You know, there are some <clears throat> discussions that people have in marriage, and I'm just going to call it discussions instead of fights, but you know what I mean, where right away at the very beginning, you bring up everything that's ever gone wrong in the marriage. Let me give you a case in point. The wife says, honey, would you take out the garbage? And he said, sure, I'd be glad to. And then it sits there. And then later on, she says, honey, didn't you say you were going to take out the garbage? He goes, oh, yeah, yeah, I'll get to it. I'm just, I'm just doing this first. And the next day, the garbage is still there. And the wife said, why don't you ever do what you say you're going to do? And he says, I'll get to it. I'll get to it. Don't worry about it. And then it sits. And then she says, you don't ever take out the garbage. She remembers all the other times. She doesn't remember the times he did. She just remembers the times that he didn't. You'd never take out the garbage. And if you really loved me, you would do this for me. Okay, now we have a problem. Yeah. So, you know, when we go to God and we say, Lord, I'm sorry that I've sinned and I'm sorry because this is the Second time I've done it this week. And God says, really? Hmm, I don't remember any other time. Why? Because the Bible says he forgives and forgets. And the Bible says that sin is buried as far as the east is from the west. There is no record of it anymore. He says, I don't remember another time. Gosh, wouldn't it be great if we could do that with our relationships? I don't remember another time. But we ought to strive to do that. I don't remember another time. That it says, love does not rejoice about injust injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Truth. You know, never um, go after a person, only go after a problem. When you personally attack another person during a discussion, you've gone about it the wrong way. It's a problem you're trying to solve, not a personal relationship. Mm -hmm. So love your spouse, love your friend, love your family member, and deal with the sin in that order. And then the Bible says, love never gives up. Love never loses faith. Love is always hopeful and endures through every circumstance. Are you getting kind of the gist of all of this? It really has to do with your decision to endure, your decision to be selfless, your decision to love unconditionally and all the attributes that go along with it. Don't give up. Don't lose faith. Continue to be hopeful. Continue to endure through every circumstance. And it says prophecy and speaking in unknown, unknown languages and special knowledge will come, will become useless. But love will last forever. Why? Because agape love has the qualities that keep on going. 
So you see, if you're struggling in a relationship, it can be fixed. And you're only struggling because you've done some of these things wrong. Seriously. You know, it's interesting how, and I've seen some people that come and say, they say, I, I want to get married. Would you do the wedding? And I go through a series of, of uh, counseling sessions with them and, and uh, they're so in love and, you know, wonderful things. And I've seen some of those same people years later say, we're getting a divorce. I can't even stand to be in the same room with her. Wow, how did that happen? How did you go from so much in love to can't stand to be in the same room together? How does it happen? Well, you violate this. You see, if you nurture love, if you take care of it, if you realize that this is a foundation for your relationship, and if you follow these things, you will, listen, you will have a successful relationship. If you don't, you're in trouble. You see, you need God with this. You need agape love with this because any other kind of love is fleeting and temporary. Hard to be in love with your spouse for the rest of your life. Hard to keep friends if you violate these principles. Can I tell you that I've, I have really close friends who have been friends, some of them 40 years, some of them more. And I, I have very few friends that I've had for less than 20 years, close friends. Have, have we always had a great relationship? Well, no. We've gone through some horrible things. I have one close friend that I went through some of the biggest hurt of my life with. And we're very close friends now. Why? Because we choose to love each other. We choose to agape. We choose to go through no matter what. Love is a choice. And love is an opportunity. Well, I hope that helps. You know, this is one of those times when I wish I had five hours because there's so much we can do. And we'll come back to this periodically and talk more about love and the intricacies of love. But I hope this is enough to get you started. Just remember, love never fails. Well, you are blessed. Go and be a blessing.